Ladies and gentlemen, live from Houston, Texas, H-Town. it's the go-to girl, the go-to professional girl. comedian, professional. TV producer, and TV founder producer. of MarryDate.com, it's Millionaire Matchmaker, Millionaire Matchmaker. Amber. Hey guys, it is your girl matchmaker Amber Neal, comedian Amber Neal as well here on the Amber Neal Show. And today is Wednesday, so we've got some really good topics for you. But first, let me welcome in my co-host, DJ Houston. What's up, guys? It's Working Women's Wednesday. Yes. Shout out to all you working women out there. Mm-hmm. You know who bossing up. Yes, out doing your damn thing. Amen. And congratulations to DJ Houston because it is his birthday week. Yes. And I congratulate you because... Living to see another birthday in today's world <laughs> is something to really be happy about. So today, guys, we've got some really great uh, topics we're going to share with you. Let me go ahead and share this here so everybody can call in. The phone lines are open. Yeah, they are. They're open 24 hours a day for y'all. Call in 866-479-8752. Yes. And make sure to go check out the matchmakerhotline.com. All right, guys. Well, let me open this up so we can answer your questions. Also, we are broadcast live on the Boss of Houston Network Facebook page. You can visually see into the studio, and you can always call into the hotline after we're off air if you want some help with booking us or you want us to uh, help you out, whatever. Just go to matchmakerhotline.com for more information about that. And But for now, we are broadcasting live in studio on Facebook, so you can chime in your comments there. And if we read your comment on air, we may have a little gift for you. Absolutely. So make sure y'all guys check us out. Hit us up. Uh, we are live on YouTube and on Facebook. Yes. Comments though. We are looking at Facebook comments today. Yeah. So make sure y'all guys chime in. And what great things do we got today, Amber? Now, so today, a few announcements. Number one is today we are officially one week away from my night starting at the Comedy Lounge on 1960. And the Crush Comedy Lounge off of in Richmond, Texas. Tickets are on sale, guys. I'm doing a singles event and comedy show at 8 o'clock for just the singles. And then I'm doing a couples-only comedy show every Wednesday and Thursday at those two clubs. Uh, for more information, go to AmberNeal.com. Tickets are on sale. And you can also get a copy of my new book. And I'm about to put my new shirts on sale. No more build a booze And then I've got a couple others I'm designing right now. But for more information about everything we have going on, go to amberneal.com. But today's topic is super interesting because, um, you know, we always talk about what we need in a relationship. We always talk about what um, we want, what we're looking for. But today we're going to do it in reverse. Today we're going to be talking about things that you actually don't need from a partner. And then at the bottom of the hour, we've got some uh, nine ways to help you not be used. Ooh, I know in this today's world that is definitely a big one because yes. there are people left and right using you and you probably don't even know it. Yes. Hey Trisha, Trisha Kyle tuning in. Y'all catch her every Friday at eight o'clock right here on the Boss Up Houston Network. She is doing it big, helping so many people and such a beautiful soul. So if you need a little you had a rough week, you need a little uh, wind down on Friday night, you need a little hope for the next week, y'all tune into Trisha Kyle's show and here every Friday at 8 o'clock. She's so taking the limits off. You know what I'm saying? Take the limits <laughs> off, baby. Right? God will meet you at your level of expectation. So y'all tune in. I'm sure she's going to be a great blessing to you. And again, the phone lines are open. 866-479-8752. If you guys want to call in and be part of the show, go ahead and call us now. We'll put you on air. And if we do, we've got a, a giveaway for you. So... Let's jump into our show. You ready? Let's do it. Girl, I was born ready. What are you talking about? (laughs) And we're going to be announcing later on today, we actually have a big announcement. Uh, We are getting syndicated, and we'll tell you more about that. So uh, y'all stay tuned. But the show's growing, so I guess we're doing something right, huh? Right. You know, (laughs) I mean, that's what happens when everybody wants a little piece of you. Everybody going to try to take (laughs) us because, you know, we just, we're popular. Yes. Hey. All right, guys, we're going to jump into our show today, today, and happy birthday. Rest in peace, 
rest in heaven to my grandpa. I don't know, he probably been like 150 by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, guys. So today we're starting off with things you actually don't need from a partner. So let's go ahead and jump into this. You don't need to be validated. That's number one. You don't get your word from anyone. When my kids were little, I told them from the time they could understand what I was saying, you don't get your worth from anyone, including me. And this is part of my self-love journey and understanding the toxic things that's been in our family and understand how hurtful those words can be. So I made sure that even protecting my children from me, if I got temperamental or if I said something I didn't mean, I put it instilled in them when they were real little, you don't get your word from anyone. And the thing about it is if you're looking for your partner to validate you all the time, you're going to be sorely disappointed because the truth is they can't all always do it. They're not always available. Sometimes they're busy, but at the end of the day, you only get your worth from yourself and what God says about you. Anything else, you're looking for trouble. Yeah, you know, you really are. Plus, I feel like when you're looking for validation from somebody, you're, you're kind of leaning more into the codependent side. Right. And it's always an ugly trait to be mm -hmm. codependent. You know, you never want to sit here and have to depend on somebody else to make you feel worthy. You yeah. know, self-love, learn it. Because you're giving your power away. If they, if they can give it to you, then they can take it away. So you don't want to look for external validation because it can be weaponized and used against you. Absolutely. Uh, and it, it's a really sad thing to say, you know. But unfortunately, if you're going into relationships like that, you're probably going into a relationship unhealed. So you're attracting mm -hmm. somebody unhealed. 100%. So, you know. Um, so today we're talking, you know, things that you actually don't need from your partner. Um, as you were just saying, you know, validation, pa, you don't need that from your partner. Validate <laughs> yourself. <laughs> uh, the second one says you don't need uh, you don't need your partner to spend every waking moment with you. They do have their own life, you know. In fact, autonomy is the is very, very, very important in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I cannot stress this enough. Just because you are dating somebody does not Even mean Harry. they are glued to you. Yeah. You know, you started as you're, you came out of the womb by yourself. I mean, for the most part. <laughs> you know, you have a twin. Yeah, I was going to say, some of you got twins, but, you know, for the most part, you came out of the womb by yourself, um, which means you have your own life. You're your own person. So they came out of the womb by themselves. They're their own life. They're their own person. Let them be. It, you you got to have your own space. Yes. It's 100%. important to have that balance. I'm not saying that now if they all, all they want to do is run away from you, then, you know, you got some deeper problems that you need to talk about. But, you know, COVID really showed us with the divorce uh, request doubling during when COVID initially, when we got basically we had the lockdown, the divorce request went through the roof because uh, people were not able to have autonomy. We're not able to find that time. So if you need help with finding creative ways to create autonomy in your relationship, hit us up, matchmakerhotline.com. Book us for a 15 minute uh, a consultation and we'll see if we can help. You know what? I got something even better for them. Mm -hmm. If you need some help, go check out maridate.com. M A R R I D A T E.com. Yes. Because guess what? That's exactly what we're here for. We're here to help cure the divorce rate by putting the date back in your marriage That's to right. help go and put that romance there. And not only are we there to go and give you fun, quirky little dates, we're there to help mental health in your relationship because it's extremely important in relationships to have yeah. that mental health. You know, a lot of people try to ignore it. They don't want to talk about it. And that's why their relationships usually fail. You got two broken people thinking they're going to be held together and that's not how it works, guys. And it's okay. You can go on your self-love journey, but it is an individual journey and you do have to do that by yourself. And you can go both be working on yourself, but, it, but it's not going to be they're going to fix you. Anything that's external will not validate you or, or help you feel more uh, worthy. So, all right, guys, today we're talking about 10 things you actually don't, maybe not 10 things, but you're, we're talking about things you don't need from your partner because uh, we normally talk about what we do. So the third one is that you, now this may be shocking to you guys because uh, we always talk about unconditional love, but let's be honest, there's conditions, okay? Ooh. You can't hit me you, if you cheat on me you know everybody has their deal breakers right but the thing is is we're looking for unconditional love but the truth is the better way to phrase that is that you don't need unconditional love in order to feel safe adult love is about collaboration centralized around a conditional experience of satisfaction 
Mm. And that's the <clears throat> thing is people are always quick to get a divorce. So we're not condoning that either. But at the end of the day, if you're in a one-sided relationship, you're, you're abused or misused or you're not treated right, that is not God's best for you. And God does not expect you to stay in, in a mess. In fact, he, you might miss your blessings because God will not bless a mess. Absolutely. You know, he's he's trying to help you get out of that mess and move on so you can get your blessing. So mm -hmm. he's not going to give you something when you're doing wrong. Exactly. You don't you don't reward people for doing bad. I tell my kids that all the time growing up, I don't reward bad behavior. Mm. That part. I, no, your... I don't. That's for sure. <laughs> what's, what's the next one? Uh, so things that you actually don't need from your partner. You don't need... Your, uh, you don't need your partner's love and admiration 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. This isn't about lack of love, but trusting in the presence of love, even when it's not explicitly expressed. You know, I mean, you can't be sitting there around, hiding around the corner every time your your partner goes out like, is he really telling me the truth? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to hide up in these bushes real quick. Like, mm -hmm. mm, you know, uh, or sitting there calling his office at 6.59 knowing he gets off at, at 7 o'clock. Like, is he still there? You know what I'm saying? Let me, yes. let me talk to him real quick. What a sad world where you mm. feel like you live to be validated by your partner or get their affection and, and their admiration and that's why go take your love language test five love languages.com it'll also teach your apology language and your anger language go take that because if you do if you are one of the things i'm really studying a lot right now is attachment styles because it, it, it to me it's a marriage of your love language right right and the thing kind of goes a little bit deeper into it so if you're a person has an avoidant attachment style and you avoid anytime there's love emotions you know time together anything like that comes up you kind of run and then but if you pair that with somebody who has an anxious attachment style from abandonment so they're they're like they're the codependent <laughs> one and they're like I got to touch you. I got to make sure you're there. I got it like physically got to attach to you to make sure you're not going to run away from me. That That is where the problem goes into. So I recommend guys, 5 languagescom but also even just Google. I mean, just Google out and learn about attachment styles. Right. It'll and make a huge difference in understanding. If you really, you know, if you don't want to Google, you can go back and catch our episode where we talked about the different styles of True. attachment. That's I think right. that was when we did a, a sexy single. I think that was one of our yes, sexy singles so, uh, episodes. With, I don't remember who, but yes. I don't remember. So you also get to meet a sexy single when you watch that episode. Uh, so if you want to go learn more about different attachment styles, go check out our episode. You can check it out on the Matchmaker Hotline or go watch the rerun on Boss Up Houston Network. And we will be right back after this little break from our friends over at Meridate. Meridate is for committed couples that are either engaged or married and would like to keep the dating in their marriage, fight for the family, and lower the divorce rate one couple at a time. We plan 30 to 50 events a month that include workshops, seminars, webinars, experts, and events all around town. This is for couples that want to develop friendships with other like-minded couples that take their marriage and vows seriously. We will also be offering premarital help so that you will not be a statistic. Would you and your partner like to take international vacations together with other couples and at group rates? When you are home, you will learn your city as you go to each new event. Your membership includes all of our locations. We take the guesswork out of creating, having, and keeping a strong marriage. Contact us today. Hey guys, it's your girl matchmaker, comedian Amber Neal, and today I am bringing you my brand new book, Caught Off the Press. Guys, I have so many copies of these. Please get one, okay? It is called How My Kitty Betrayed Me, and it's about the women's live movement and how one thing they don't tell you is, yes, we want money, education, and rights like men, but one thing that the women's rights movement doesn't explain to you is how we're still women we still attach we release a chemical in our brain that attaches us to every single person we have sex with it's called soul ties and one thing i can tell you that will keep you from your god-given purpose <laughs> let your kitty betray you when you get distracted okay all i'm trying to say is you know we, we we want all the same rights as men but at the end of the day 
Picking your partner is the most important decision you'll ever make. And so I challenge you to get a copy of my book today so that you can learn from my mistakes that I made thinking that, hey, if men can do it, so can we. But trust and believe after being a single parent for 25 years, <laughs> your kitty betrayed you, okay? Get your copy today, amberneal.com. For more information, go to Amber Neal Show on Facebook. Get your copy. I'll be glad to autograph it and send it out to you today. to the Amber Neal Show. I'm your host, Amber Neal, the matchmaker and comedian Houston's go-to girl with my co-host, DJ Houston. What, 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 what? <laughs> it's, uh, we made it to another Wednesday. Another you know what I'm saying? Wednesday. Another Wednesday. That means we're halfway through the week. Yes. I am two days closer to my birthday. It's his birthday. It's kind of a catch-22 because I'm kind of regretting it because I'm getting up there in age, but I'm also yeah, kind of like, oh, I hey, I made it through COVID. You know yes. what I'm saying? I want to be turning 29 again. I turn 29 oh. every year. Uh, but today, guys, we have a really good show for you. Thanks for staying tuned in. We're talking about things you don't actually need from a partner. And um, in the next segment, we're going to be talking about nine ways to not be used. You definitely want to stay tuned for that. But let's jump back into our topic. Today, we're talking about things you don't need. Um, and right now, you don't. You need to just learn how to honor the difference and influence each other, meaning that you don't have to fully understand somebody. You don't have to fully understand their style. Uh, to have a satisfying relationship because everyone has their own unique emotional experience in the way they process things and people think oh we have to be just alike for me to be able to understand them sometimes this is where real love not lust comes in because love is sacrifice it's, it is selfless it is long suffering it is patient it is kind keyword is kind there guys and the thing is if you're getting angry because or frustrated because they don't show or process love or have it they have a whole unique experience you and I could have the same experience and get something totally emotionally different out of it uh, absolutely you can't expect us to have the same emotional experience because we're two different people we process it through our own filter I, I absolutely agree with that you know um not only that but just the fact that everybody sees things differently too you know what i'm saying so it's That's like just because i see it one way doesn't mean you see it the other way Exactly. I'm basically just saying what you're saying in different words. For okay. People. You know what I'm saying? Try to break it down to that layman's term. But it doesn't mean you're not understood just because they don't see your point. I can still understand what you're saying. Mm. I can understand you all day long. That don't mean I agree with you. So don't feel like you are not having a fulfilling emotional experience just because your partner don't see it the way you do. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. Uh, so today we're talking things that you actually don't need from your partner. These yes. are things that you can pretty much give yourself. And Ember was just telling everybody, you know, about how we don't need validation all the time. We don't need to be glued to their side at all times. Mm -hmm. We don't even have to understand them at all times. Now we don't, especially men. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and so now I'm going to tell you, you don't even need to have the same interests and hobbies. You can totally be two different people, mm -hmm. have two different interests. Like, I, I, you know, I love to be active and do sports and hiking. And I and, hate it. Exactly. And Amber's like, mm -mm, she likes to stay at home and watch TV. You can't and, even bribe me with Dr. And, Pepper on that one. <laughs> You can be like, they have a whole cooler, Dr. Pepper. No. Uh, they got grab, a whole pool. You can just, just. I'd be like, grab the cooler on the way back for me, though. <laughs> Bring it to the house. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you do need to have a thing together, you know, you or do. a couple of things, you know. So, like, have a, a movie night or paint night or Game um, night. exactly something yeah, where you're doing some night. exactly something where you're doing where both of your hobbies come together, you know, um, or come up with your own creative hobby together, you know, like yes. uh, be different. Don't, don't you don't have to follow the the regular chain of command, as I can say for everybody, you know, like you don't have to do things the, the natural order way. Just come up with something, you know, be have something that you enjoy doing together. Um, be learn. open to try new things together. Exactly. You like, know, at least try like, I mean, don't just like turn your partner down like a flat no, unless you just know, like, it's absolutely things I hate. But if it's a bucket list for both of you and you're like, you know what? 
that's the way to really find your common interest is both of y'all write a bucket list together. And I bet you might actually have more commonalities because studies show that opposites attract, but they don't stay together. So you got to have enough in common to be that glue. Otherwise, you're going to have different schedules. Right, right. But, you know, you also want to learn to explore your own hobbies, your right. own interests. Have your own personality. True. You know, um, it's, it's, it's about being independent but also coming together. You know, you yeah. still got to have a life outside of being together, but you still got to have a life together, that part. you know, because a lot of people think, oh, well, I'm going to get, I'm so independent. I want to get into this relationship and I'm going to completely stay independent. Everything I do is still going to be on my own. I'm still going to take myself out on dates. I'm still going to go watch movies alone. Why have a partner? Why be with somebody if you're not going to include your, them? Because your dildo can't back it up from behind. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's the next one? Um, is the next one today we're talking about things you don't actually have to yeah, things you don't actually need from your partner. Uh, the next one is you don't need to solve conflicts all the time. Let sleeping dogs lie. Pick your battles. Some things are important. Some things are not. Some things you just, you, you know, I saw a study that said 70% of couples argue over things they will never resolve. 70%. Wow. Okay. Wow. So when you think about that, sometimes resolution is possible. Other times, it is not. The resolution is that it comes from your tolerating, mm -hmm. this is where we give and take, tolerating conflict without pushing for a resolution. If it's not important, say, say if it's not important to you in five years, you know, pick your battle, right? Not only that, but sometimes people may s complain about something, yeah. but they're not asking you to fix it. Sometimes they just want to get it off their chest, you know, let somebody else know that, hey, I had to deal with an idiot today, and you know, like, I don't need you to go fix it. I don't need you to go and, and fix that idiot for me or, or try to do those things, but I need you to just be there to let me vent, you exactly. know? Um, so it's not always about fixing the problems. Sometimes it's about just being that shoulder you can, they can cry on or that ear that they can uh, talk to, you know? Mm -hmm. Lend them that listening ear, so. Uh, these are things like though we're that we're about to land a plane with this background. <laughs> y'all like our y'all like our virtual set here. We got some are y'all getting little... dizzy with the lights yet? <laughs> I'm sure we get tra entranced by the lights over here. I forget I'm on the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we got to take another quick break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about nine ways to not be used. Y'all don't want to miss this. Absolutely, and make sure if y'all guys are tuned into the show, leave a comment, like, share, watch us on YouTube, watch us on Facebook on the Boss of Houston Network, yes. and of course the phone lines are open so that means the matchmaker hotline is open it's open to y'all 24 7 toll free give us a call at 866-479-8752 and if you get on air i think we might just have something to give for you you yeah. know what i'm saying so once again give us a call 866-479-8752 and we will be right back after a word from our friends <laughs> Want to be a boss? You're watching Boss Up Houston Network. It's Boss Up Houston, where we look up, stay up, and boss up. Maridate is for committed couples that are either engaged or married and would like to keep the dating in their marriage, fight for the family, and lower the divorce rate one couple at a time. We plan 30 to 50 events a month that include workshops, seminars, webinars, experts, and events all around town. This is for couples that want to develop friendships with other like-minded couples that take their marriage and vows seriously. We will also be offering premarital help so that you will not be a statistic. Would you and your partner like to take international vacations together with other couples and at group rates? When you are home, you will learn your city as you go to each new event. Your membership includes all of our locations. We take the guesswork out of creating, having, and keeping a strong marriage. Contact us today.
Hey guys, it's your girl matchmaker, comedian Amber Neal, and today I am bringing you my brand new book, Caught Off the Press. Guys, I have so many copies of these. Please get one, okay? It is called How My Kitty Betrayed Me, and it's about the women's live movement and how one thing they don't tell you is, yes, we want money, education, and rights like men, but one thing that the women's rights movement doesn't explain to you is how we're still women we still attach we release a chemical in our brain that attaches us to every single person we have sex with it's called soul ties and one thing i can tell you that will keep you from your god-given purpose <laughs> let your kitty betray you when you get distracted okay all i'm trying to say is you know we, we we want all the same rights as men but at the end of the day picking your partner is the most important decision you'll ever make and so i challenge you to get a copy of my book today so that you can learn from my mistakes that i made thinking that hey if men can do it so can we but trust and believe after being a single parent for 25 years <laughs> Your kitty betrayed you, okay? Get your copy today, amberneal.com. For more information, go to Amber Neal Show on Facebook. Get your copy. I'll be glad to autograph it and send it out to you today. Hey, guys. Welcome back into the Amber Neal Show. It was my co-host, DJ Houston. Hey, 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 hey. It's Wednesday. Yeah. I got my Ooh. trusty book with me. I was say, it looks like Amber got a kitty in her, in her hands. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, y'all just saw the commercial for that. I wrote a book. It is about how, how as women, we have let our kitty betray us. We used to require a rock. Now it's what time do you get off. So women's love has kind of got us in a bad situation where the value of the V is at the all-time low. So if you want to get more information, this is a true story about my situation uh, for relationships. And I was trying to explain this to somebody the other day because I always get asked, how are you a single matchmaker? How do you, how do you create all these things for uh, these people for love? Love, but you're single and I'm like because like I'll give me my mom for example my mom was abused my mom went through foster care my mom was given up for adoption my mom went through extremely harsh conditions broken very brutally but guess what she matched and married all her friends to their husbands and they stayed together and none of them ever got divorced so that's my point I've been a matchmaker 17 years and yes I'm divorced but I also have never had a client get divorced but see that's what you don't people have to learn to separate being learning being part of generational curses has nothing to do if if you're psychic you know what i'm saying not right. saying i'm psychic but i'm just trying to relate it to a short point of i have a gift of discernment i'm an empath matchmaker so i can have a gift that doesn't mean that i i uh, can do it you know i haven't i haven't healed myself yet so i had to go on a self-love journey and uh, i actually went on my self-love journey after I wrote this book. So there's definitely going to be a part two, guys. Right. And I think it's going to teach you this. When I wrote this book, I was cognizant of what the, you know, learning the lesson and realizing that self love is the best love, at least the healthy love. Um, and in this book, Mr. Wright walks in and you get to see who Mr. Wright is. So if you want to get a copy of my new book, hit me up. I love the support, amberneal.com. And today we are one week away from the launch of the Amber Neal Show Comedy Night at. Crush Comedy Lounge in Richmond and the Comedy Lounge of 1916 Your Champions. So we got singles mixers with comedy shows and we have couples mixers with comedy shows. And DJ Houston has his own night on Tuesdays now. Right. I'm six days away from my night. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? We're doing a little game night. It's going to be so much fun fun i'm yes. excited yes. i've been wondering all week i've been like ooh, what's, what game do i want to <laughs> kick this event off mm -hmm. with you know and i'm thinking something real fun like maybe cards against humanity or ooh, something like that it. you I know what i'm saying like that, that, yes. that, that game get crazy that, that game. <laughs> makes I, you like super competitive too but yeah. it can get really really crazy and so. guess what we got an announcement coming out you'll have to stay tuned uh we're going to be announcing we are being syndicated so you've got to find out what network is picking us up next. We're working on that. We'll get that out today. So y'all stay tuned. Tonight we'll be releasing that promo video for that. Absolutely. And make sure you guys are uh, subscribed to our YouTube yes. channel at Boss Up Houston Network. And make sure you have your notifications on for Boss Up Houston on Facebook because guess what? We got some really amazing new shows coming over. We have some celebrity shows coming over. Mm -hmm. We have um, some great, great, great new segments. Coming out. Shows. Exactly, you know. Yes. Um, Boss Up comes back, you this know. Saturday, they're... back in studio filming again at 10 a.m. Shamir, <laughs> why don't you love me? 
She's like, I do love you. It's called tough no, love, girl. Tough no, love. No, tough, no, that's not tough love. I, I just can't go to sleep till five or six in the morning. So six to <laughs> ten is my window. That's okay, guys. Y'all catch it out. Boss of Houston Talk Show is coming back Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock right here on the Boss of Houston Network. All right, guys. So we've been talking about today's topic is really interesting. We've always talked about things you need in a relationship. Y'all go back and watch the first part of the show on the YouTube channel or the Boss of uh, Facebook page because... We talked about things that you actually don't need in a relationship and how to normalize those things. Right. And now we're going to talk about nine ways to not be used. Ooh. And they're so simple. They, they really are. But, I you mean, know. Like, the, there's not even anything written. You <laughs> 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 know, it's like, there's, there it is. A but, lot of the problem is, though, people really don't even know that they're getting used. You know, mm-hmm. they, they think it's just like they chalk it up to, as, oh, this was a one-time thing or no, 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 no. They didn't. They didn't know that they were doing that. You Which know? means what? They don't know their worth. Because mm. sometimes, and listen, guys, this is some crazy. It is so mind blowing when you really get into human psychology of it, and realizing that a lot of the times you are being rejected not because you're not good enough. You're being rejected because they don't think they are. Ooh. It's crazy. Would you go shop for a Lamborghini if you knew you couldn't buy it? Hell no. And in fact, you wouldn't even want to test drive it because you know you can't afford to fix it. It's the same thing with relationships. They're not coming at you because they know that you're out of their league and it has nothing to do with looks or high value, as other people try to say. It is about the value inside of the person, what you really bring to the table. And the funny thing is... In your heart. People sit here and they, they, they stunt too much. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's funny how they'll sit here and try to go out of their league yeah. when they know that they can't do it. Like, you ever see those Mercedes yes. that are missing bumpers? <laughs> <laughs> you got flat tires. <laughs> no, being held together by some duct tape. They got a Mercedes, but they don't have no gas for it. Or or they got a Mercedes, <laughs> but they ain't got no house. Or they got that? a Mercedes and their rims cost more than the actual car. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're like, we're going to stop clowning on Mercedes, okay? All right, guys. For all you Mercedes owners out there. So what's the number one way not to be used, DJ Houston? Uh, so today, nine, uh, nine ways to not be used. Trust patterns, okay? Make sure you're watching their trust patterns and not their apologies. Oof. Because trust patterns are way different than apology patterns, okay? I can say sorry a thousand times and never mean it. That's okay? right. But if I say sorry and I show you that I'm sorry, you know, I mean, it's hard sometimes to show you're sorry, but it's more about watch the what, what, watch what they do, not what they say. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if they apologize and you find them doing it again. And again. And again. And again. And again. Whose fault really is it? Exactly. Exactly. People do what they want to do. And that's that, and, and yeah, people do what you let them. And that's that pattern that we're talking about, that trust pattern. So if they don't do it anymore... You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's been a year, and they accidentally slip up on something small again, you know? That's, okay. Yeah, that's that's a sincere apology. They're, they yeah. didn't really mean to do that, you know? So you can still kind of trust them, but you know what I'm saying? Now, if it happens today, and then it happens next week or next month again, they want and then the month that. again, yeah. that's that. those are the patterns that we're talking about. And it's hard. And listen, guys, I cannot stress this enough. Stop internalizing this. Stop uh, Stop looking for the, like we said, you don't need the validation externally. So if somebody rejects you, don't take it personal. That is them rejecting themselves, period, point blank. And you're better off to, listen, I know. I, I've gone through it, you probably have too, where you love somebody. Love is not enough. If they don't love themselves, they will always sabotage the relationship. Absolutely. Ooh, we talk about this next one all the time. But, you know, it's almost like I want to carry a sign around that, like, you know, to help people understand this. That, you know, right in line with trusting the um, pattern, not the apologies, is believe the red flags. I mean, seriously, how many times, and I know I've, I've been guilty. Right. Of, uh, you know, it's funny, I was, I was, I'm starting to write, you know, get ready for my comedy show in a week. And I started really writing about why I'm a good matchmaker. And, it, you know, but that's enough. Y'all can come see that for the show because it might surprise you the answer. But the red flags are always there. And it is the red flags that you ignore in the beginning are always always the reason why it ends in the end. Right. And that's why, you know, we constantly talk about even pink flags, you know, the mm-hmm. things that are potential to be red flags, you know, because they're, they're small little things that you're like, mm, mm, you can't prove it. Exactly. You don't know. 
but or... then you start noticing it more and more, and those are red. Those are red flags. Instantly mm-hmm. red flags. So mm-hmm. you know, and, and, but you don't think about them as red flags because you constantly keep putting it in the pink zone, mm-hmm. and you and everybody else is like, "Hello, honey, this is a red <laughs> flag. It's screaming at you." Ooh, right like, here, buddy, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I, know, I know your favorite color might be red, but not when it comes to dating and relationships. Absolutely not. If I see a red flag, <laughs> I actually pack up and I grab my green flag and I go. <laughs> and, the, and the question is, people are like, well, how many red flags are too many? Honestly, three. That is kind of like, I for me, it's three strikes you're out. That's kind of the rule that I apply. It's like, okay, that's one. But honestly, mm. it can be one. It just depends on how big the red flag is. If they're like, for example, if they're never calling you when they say they will, they're constantly breaking plans with you when they say they wouldn't, when they don't make time for you, they take hours or days to write you back. Those are really red flags. So it really depends on the severity of it. But if you need some help with date coaching, hit me up at, at Matchmaker Hotline or AmberNeal.com. Hit me up. I'll be glad to help you kind of navigate those things. And that's what date coaching really is about. Is like, is this big enough for me to blow up the relationship? Right? right. Or if you really want some help, you know, finding that special someone, come sit on a sexy single sofa. Yes. You know, every Thursday we try to yes. feature a new sexy single to go out there and get match made by Amber. I mean, come on, guys. This is free matchmaking, basically. Yeah. And uh, let me tell you, Amber charges like $35,000 a year. To get match made, okay, and if we're doing it for you for free, plus along with that date coaching, you know, because a lot of times, a lot of times people really don't need to be match made. They they just need date coaching. You know what I'm saying? So we got both for you. If you wanna if you wanna do both, we got them. Come sit on that sexy single sofa, or yeah. check out the matchmaker hotline. Yeah. And you know, if you don't want to go and public, become a and, client. exactly become a client. I know some people are scared of the camera, so it's okay. Hit I cannot up. tell you how many weddings that I have created uh, or caused that I don't get invited to the wedding. Uh, and that is uh, people just sometimes don't want to admit they needed help, you know, but that's okay. So what's the next Absolutely. one of nine ways to not be used? Uh, so the next tip that we got for you is don't fall in love with, with, potential. with potential. Exactly. I'm like, hold on. I'm, I'm trying to, trying to, you know, ease them into it. <laughs> A lot of them don't realize that they're in love with potential. Mm-hmm. Um, Got to keep them on the edge. They're like, wait. What? With what? <laughs> with what? Come on, DJ Houston. Tell me. Everything. Yeah, with potential. I mean, everyone has potential, but not everybody can reach their potential. Yeah. So do you really want to fall in love with what if? No more build a booze. Mm. Listen, guys, it's okay to support your man, woman, whatever. It's okay to support them and be the ride or die. But at, the, at what cost? If it's costing you your sanity, your peace of mind, if uh, you know, you're know you just constantly trying to prop them up. Listen, I saw this one uh, girl made a comment on, um, on um, Instagram yesterday, and she posted, her post said, yeah, I always pay for the first date because I like a man to know that I'm down for him. I'm like, look, dummy, you don't turn me into Kevin Samuels, okay? I'm like, look, that's that's. Listen, you're not attracting a man to know he's riding for you, or you're riding for him. You are attracting a bum, okay? You're not trying to be a nurse or a purse. And I understand equality, and it's okay to even pay for some dates eventually. But no matter how many feminists date coaches come out here and try to tell you about how to do it i'm going to tell you all the way men think and that and i don't care what you think as a feminist i'm pro women too but i'm not against men you know what i'm saying but the thing is is no matter what you think is the way to do it at the end of the day women have changed men are still the same basic eat sleep do me make me you know make me feel like a king make me feel good but they're not men are very simple honestly and i'm telling you it's women that have done the changing and that's why everybody's so confused and that's why a fourth of the marriages last year ended up in about domestic uh who's doing who's cleaning what you know household chores because people don't know who does what now because women are in the workforce but at the end of the day, you got to soften that up and you've got to come and understand that you might have changed in the way you look at it. But if you're out here paying and pursuing, he's just not that into you. If you got to go through all that extra, trust me, 
trust one thing I know. The last marriage I put together was in 87 days from the moment mm. they met. Why? Because of what I'm telling you right here. Men go down. Men go after what they, well, they, we hope they, we hope they do. Now, but men, men pursue and go after and lock it down. When a man meets a woman, a queen, queen king behavior. We're not talking about clowns and jokers. But when a king recognizes a queen, I promise you he's going to lock it down. When a man identifies, he knows he will never get that again in, in life. When he finds that one he knows is not replaceable, I promise you he will lock it down. And if he hasn't, you're delusional and fooling yourself and you're just buying time. And guess what? Now you're getting older. And, and, and guess what? By the time you're both are in your 40s, the benefit changes to him anyway. And now you're stuck out and he can go get the 20-year-old. But you think but you look like a clown dating the 20-year-old. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just, it's still unfair is my point. It's still unfair out here. But the reality of it is, is that you're falling in love with potential and that's never going to get you the result you're looking for. At all, because, you know, you're supposed to be looking for a king, so somebody who's already met their potential, or a queen. You know? They're already they're already and, living their potential, or almost, or at least working toward it every day. Right. Not so, like, can I sleep on your couch while um, I go try to, no. No, you got to give something to build with. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not falling in love with, well, maybe, I even talk about this on stage when I talk about my tape measure, and I'm like, you know what? Just keep writing that music, boo. Just keep writing that music, because that's what it is. It's okay to believe in somebody, but there's got to be limits on it. It can't just be like, open for all, here's my wallet, here's my time, here's my resource. No, that is not healthy. Absolutely correct. Because today we're talking about nine ways to not be used. Okay, so the next one is, Know when to let that ish go. Ugh. That is the number one thing I get as a date coach is how do I know when to stay and how do I know when to go? And it's very simple. People do what they want to do. People do what you let them. I promise you, if you don't do nothing else but apply those two sentences to your life, you will weed out the clowns. Because when you start making excuses for people and you start holding yourself accountable to people and yourself, it's all going to go away. But the thing is, you don't have, you haven't built up your self love enough to be able to handle the truth that they're not into you. But don't take it personal. So what? Are you talking about 8 billion people? There's still like hundreds of thousands of options for you, right? But at the end of the day, you've got to work on yourself and your self-love so that you can get to that place that if you do feel rejected by somebody, it doesn't steal your joy. You don't miss a beat because that's their truth. And that's okay. Just like there's chocolate vanilla strawberry. I'm not eating strawberry, but I'll eat chocolate vanilla. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I use a food reference. Oh, but, always. But, I mean... <laughs> Sometimes you just got to let it go, though. You know, when you've given your best, and that's why even with me, I'm guilty of holding on way too long and giving multiple chances. Uh, and I've even fallen in love with potential more than once. And, and that's the bad side about being an empath. I can read into what your potential is. But the reality is, if they're not doing it, they don't want to. And yes, it's hurtful, but it's more hurtful to be in a relationship and feel alone than it is to actually be alone and, and be true to yourself. You know, you're, gosh, you, you're right. There's just times where you just have to cut it off. You know, it, it's more toxic for you than it is helping you. And, you know, you, you have, yeah, you really do got to learn to cut those ties, cut that umbilical cord, stop feeding them, you know, because at the same time, you're hurting them, you know, because you're, you're allowing them, as we always say, you're allowing them to live that lifestyle, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just like people who complain about crappy music. Yeah. And I'm like, you know why this crappy song became popular? Because the band was popular and people just refused to let it go. They wanted, they wanted to be when it was back. So if you just stop supporting crap, we wouldn't have to listen to crap no more. And it's the same thing with relationships. If you just stop uh, putting up with crap and, and these potential people, then you would actually be able to find the relationship you're looking for. You wouldn't have to deal with the crap anymore. And some of y'all are praying that God removes your enemies, but y'all don't want to say that because you're scared he's going to remove your man, okay? <laughs> you're sleeping with the enemy. And guess what? And when you look in the mirror in the morning, you're the enemy. Because when you're playing yourself, you're not true to yourself, you only live once. I, you know what I always envision? I always envision, like, being old and I'm, like, on my deathbed. Yeah. And think, I, I do. I, I really envision, like, when I am about to take my last breath, and assuming I live long, that's, that's the other part we do wrong is we think there's tomorrow. 
But assuming I live a long life and I'm looking back and reflecting on my life, I want to live big and die empty. I don't want to sit there and go, God, I wasted my best years. I didn't go after that dream because I was so unhealed that I thought a relationship was going to heal me. When, but I really wanted to be a journalist. Or I really wanted to be a photographer or whatever. But you literally just never let it go because you couldn't get out of depression because you're focused on a person making you feel what you want. And the, the worst thing is when you feel that resistance, that is your sign that it's time to let go. The resistance will let you know it's not for you right now. Mm. And that that brings us to our next sign. Yes. Uh, or our next way to not be used. And if it feels wrong, then mm. it probably is wrong. Yeah. Don't do it. Shy away. Go the opposite direction. Don't even try to entertain any kind of idea with it. If you got, you got to trust your second brain. Hmm. Which is your gut. gut. If it tells you no. <laughs> if it says no, if you're going into it and you're having any kind of doubts, then yes. you know, you're know you more than likely right, you know, because it's probably, you're probably noticing red flags that you've noticed before, mm -hmm. you know, and you just, you want to see the potential. And screw all that. If it tells you, if you're like, you walk up and you're just like, you know, I, don't, I can't say what it is, but something just don't feel right about trust this. It. Trust it. Go, because I'm telling you. Though, when I've had those signs before, those are probably the worst relationships I've ever been in, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm sitting here like, oh, it's okay. It, it was just, you know, little little this, yeah. little that. It's it's all good. It's all good. You I'm see, that's how the enemy works, though. He keeps you trapped in your emotion so that you're distracted and you miss your calling. As long as he can keep you. And here's the thing, too, guys. You cannot manifest unless you're in a grateful, joyful energy. You have to be happy and uh putting positive thoughts out there. I've been working on the law of attraction for over 10 years and I'm telling you, I'm just now mastering it. I mean, I'm just now because fear, we have been programmed our whole life to live in fear-based thinking. And, the, and, and so it's not easy to reprogram your mind. And I think about people that suffer and uh, get to that point, they just want to give up. But the thing is, is you have to understand that you, it's, you're never alone. And it's okay if you're suffering through depression, if you're suffering through mental illness, you're suffering through a loss of a spouse or a work, a work. this too shall pass. You know, at the end of the day, God never promised us life would be easy. He never promised us a spouse. Right. He never promised us anything. All he said is, you're not going to go through it alone. Right, right, right. And that's something that we, you know, we talked yesterday about things we need to normalize, you know, and we really need to normalize mental health, you yes. know, like it is more and more people die every year of suicide because of depression, because people are bullying, mm -hmm. because people are just not treating other people with love like we should. And we really need to normalize the fact that people get depressed. Yeah. The fact that people are just not okay sometimes in the head. And that we it's okay to get help. Mm -hmm. Because that's what's not being normalized. Getting the help. Exactly. It's so, like I've started seeing people say it's normal to get depressed. It's normal to feel that way. But it's not normal to see a psychiatrist. It's not normal it's to not stay normal. that way. Right, right, Go right. Go get help, guys. Go get help. There's, how long we have. there's plenty of help out there for you. Like 10 minutes? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, we're going to speed it up and jump through the last few because, um, man, we can talk, okay? <laughs> we love talking to y'all, though. And, yeah, we hope you guys will start calling into the hotline and talk to us because we'd love to hear from you. Right. The hotline is open, 866-479-8752. For those of you who are listening on our podcast platforms after the live show, yes. the hotline is still open to you anytime, any day. Give us a call, 866-479-8752. And guys, today we're talking about nine ways to not be used. And this next one is really great because it's short and simple to the point. One of the, I had to learn this the hard way um, because I'm kind of country and I'm just friendly with everybody. And I just talk to everybody and I just, we judge others how we see ourselves. So I don't really think that there's malicious. I know, I know now there are malicious people that just want to get next to you to find out what you're doing and what you're working on. They don't really care about you. They just want to get dirt. They're like the freaking FBI. You know what I'm saying? They're just trying to find out what's in your bank account oh. uh, and let Joe Biden have his way. He'll be, he'll be monitoring our accounts. It, it, you got more than $600 some switch is going to come on they're going to monitor your account and then I saw today where some church was being prosecuted for opening a church and the guy got sentenced to six years in prison I'm like here we go alright guys but the next one is nine ways to not be used is be careful who you vent to Ooh, you know we talked about this last week in life hacks you should know 
And we said that just because somebody listens to you mm-hmm. does not mean that they have your best interest at heart. Sometimes they're just sitting there using whatever you say to them mm-hmm. to build dirt on you, to throw it back in your face at some other time. So be careful who you vent to. You know what's funny is there's so many people that I've cut out of my circle here in the last few years. And I'm like, man, I'm sure I'm glad I had an NDA with them. <laughs> Facts. You know, because it's crazy how many people I've trusted, and then it just, and honestly, not all of it is malicious. It's not meant to, you know, they're not trying to hurt me, but their insecurities get the best of them, and it's like the thing they loved about me is usually the thing they wind up hating about me, um, but I hustle at a level most people can't keep up with, and I say that humbly as I can, but that's just, that's the gift I have. I, I humble fat. I mean, I, I hustle fast. Um, but, but then when they expect you to meet me at that same work level and that work ethic, then it's a problem. And then I'm the bad person, but you know what? I'll stay, I'll stay the problem as long as I focus on my mission and not my emotions, but be careful who you vent to, because there's people right now. I'm just like, uh, you know, but let it come out. But that's the point of healing from all the things you've been through is you get out of the shame. And there's nothing, there's nothing anybody can say about me right now that I, I wouldn't really give a damn at all. You know, and, and and that's that's the straight fact because at times I just I get so tired of people talking so much just trash about people all the mm-hmm. time in, in their own circles, you know. Um, so I stopped. Like I have two to three people that I went to, and I know that they like they went to me as well. So I know if they try to screw me, I got them too. You know what I'm saying? So um, be, be very careful. Like you just really got to find your safe space and, and know that the people that you have right there are the, that you do vent to are the only people that you should vent to because um, the more, the bigger your circle, the more chance of a leak, you know, the smaller the circle, the less chance of a leak. So you can trust a smaller circle. If y'all guys, if y'all are just now tuning into the show, uh, make sure y'all guys catch the rerun later on. Go to the YouTube channel because the first half of the hour, on the t- first half of the hour, we were talking about twelve things that you actually don't need from your partner. We gave you some great little advice in there about how you know basically to self love yourself. You know, um, self love is the most important kind of love in the world. Now we're talking about uh, nine ways to not be used. And Amber was just telling everybody, you know, be careful who you've been to. Hmm. And now I'm going to tell you to. Trust your intuition. Yeah. You know, it's, it's as simple as that. If you feel like there's something going on, you feel like there's something wrong, it's because there is, is. something wrong. It walks like a duck. Qua- it quacks like a duck. It's a, it's duck. a duck. If okay. it smells like fish, it's probably fish. I probably need to take a bath. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and guys, the last, uh, second to last one is just remember your worth. Honestly, knowing your worth will eliminate most of the things we're talking about. If you know your worth, I watched uh, R.C. Jakes, Pastor R.C. Jakes. He has a church here in Houston and Atlanta. I may, I like listening to him. Um, he's real biblical in his principles, and he really applies it to a common sense, uh, what is a high-value woman? And I, I really enjoyed watching that the other day because, you know, certain date coaches will have you out here believing that high value has to do with everything in the world, which is why you're depressed and not feeling good enough because you can't afford it or you don't know how to get it or that's just not you. Maybe you weren't born looking like that. Like most of us are just average people. And it's crazy because... Um, but when you really, you know, he was talking, the next, the next video, I haven't watched it yet, that he has out is five behaviors of a queen that knows her worth. And that's the difference is before you start trying to clown other men, and I do agree with Kevin Samuels in the sense that women have to be accountable for their behavior as well. But before you start trying to clown other people, you b- before you think you're going to get Boaz, before you think you're going to attract the queen, the king, you have to be the queen first. So there's behaviors that that is how he recognizes you is by the way you carry yourself and the way you handle yourself. Back to pat trust and patterns, not apologies. You can put on makeup you can put on a a fancy outfit and drive a fancy car and live in a fancy house but you're never going to fool a real king a real king will be able to see right through that and see that's a facade because you're not healed and you're using things to mask your your uh, insides so if you want to attract a king the number one thing is to know your worth and the only way you can know that is by being true to yourself and really practice on becoming the queen so that when your king does come around, you can attract him. Trust me, just like a real queen, we're not putting up with little boy behavior. We want a mm. grown man. 
again, you're entertaining clowns and you think it's a king. You'll never turn a clown into a king. It's just not the way it works. And if he is a king, he's probably king of the clowns. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And do you really want the person leading the clowns? I mean, trust me, I love a funny person. Like, I love a man that can make me laugh. But not at my expense. Okay. Right. And so going right along with knowing your worth, you know, the last thing I got to tell you for the, the the ninth tip on not to be used is don't lower your standards. Mm, that Never, ever settle. I okay? can't. I can't. There was time. There's a lot. <laughs> there was a lot of times I did settle and that was because I wasn't healed. And I was so scared that um, they would reject me or they would not you know, pick me or whatever the case may be. But now that I'm healed, I love being alone. I really do. I, yes, will, will I get married? I probably will get married again. But the thing is, I got married so young in my 20s. I was so toxic. I was so unhealed. I just witnessed three divorces in my family. Uh, generational curses we're trying to overcome. So get a copy of my book today because it's going to show you part of the journey that I went on to heal myself because it truly is better to be alone because here's the thing. You can be in a temporary situationship of friends with benefit, a hookup, a boo, a bay, and a bird. You can do all that, right? But at the end of the day, when you're holding on to the wrong relationship, you're not free to receive the right one. And God's not going to bless a mess. And that goes back to everything we talked about today. You've got to get the wrong people out of your life. Be careful who you vent to. Know your worth. Understand nothing is external. And you're going to be at a lot peaceful place. Because once you get... It, it's just true or not. Once you get happy and you really start living your best life and you know your worth, it's like every, the, everybody in there, I, I was got these text messages from guys last night and I'm like, what happened? The floodgates opened or what? It's because my light is because I'm radiating. It's because I'm confident. It's because I know my worth and I ain't thirsty for approval mm. or acceptance from any of them. You know, one of the ways to... Let the best man win. That's my motto. Right. And you know, one of the best ways to... to tell you exactly what she's talking about. Remember, think about every time you get a haircut, you get that new outfit that you feel really good in, mm -hmm. your confident boost goes up, and then all of a sudden everybody's like attracted to you, they're hitting on you. You know, you feel like, oh, these new jeans are what made me, you know, they're, 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 no, it's that confidence level. It's just like when you get into a new relationship, your confidence is so good, you're, you're radiating love and all this positive energy and everybody wants it. So that's exactly. why when you start dating somebody and you get comfortable, that's when all the people want to come out of the woodworks and sit here and start DMing you and, yeah. hey cutie, can I yeah. take you on a date? Or looking for some type of mistake you in your relationship. <laughs> I even had a guy hit me up the other day, it's hilarious. I, I dated him in 98. Okay, uh, so you know what, it's good, it's good. Uh, but anyway, back to how my kitty would me. Uh, I'm just saying, guys, at the end of the day, people do what they want to do and people do what you let them. If you just live by those two rules, life's going to be simple. And uh, we got to get out of here, guys. But go for more information about everything I have going on, amberneal.com. Uh, one week from today, we have the comedy show starting at the, at the Crush Comedy Lounge in Richmond and the Comedy Lounge on 1960 and Champions. You can get a copy of my new book, How My Kitty Betrayed Me. And Jacob has his own night starting out there on Tuesdays as well. Right. Every Tuesday, catch me over at Comedy Lounge F of 1960 for LGBTQ Game Night. All right. Where I'm going to be out there giving you the best of the music. And I'm going to have one of your favorite uh, drag queen talents out there every week sitting here giving you the best show, hosting the game night. And again, you know, we're going to switch it up every week. So make sure y'all guys check it out. The event is live on eventbrite.com. Go check it out. Uh, I know Amber's events are live on Eventbrite too. Go get your tickets today. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so much fun. And I cannot tonight, wait. We've got a big announcement. Yeah, we do. So make sure you guys follow us on social media. You know, you can hit up at the Amber Neal. She is on Instagram at the Amber Neal. She is on Facebook at Amber Neal. You can also, Amber the matchmaker mm -hmm. Amber Neal. My bad, my bad. Okay. And then make sure uh, <laughs> you go and follow us at the show. You know, we have um, the Amber Neal show on Facebook. We have the matchmaker hotline on Facebook. Mary Date. We have Mary Date on Facebook. We have Boss Up Houston on Facebook. Yes. 
Uh, also go check. We PR firm on Facebook. Oh, you know, I always forget about the PR firm. Yeah, Dude, there's so much going on. <laughs> you also got DJ Houston on Facebook. So make sure you guys go follow us on our social medias to find out all the latest and greatest details about us and where we're at outside of the show. Because <laughs> we do have lives. You know yes. what I'm saying? We do have uh, all kinds of fun, amazing things that we do. And what is today? Wednesday. So today, Two days away from his birthday. Oh. It's Libra season, guys. Libra season. It is Libra we season. We got Jamie Wright coming coming out with us on Friday, and then we got your birthday party at 4 o'clock. There's so almost a surprise party. Right, right. It was yes. so close. And tomorrow so is our sexy single sofa. So if you want to be on the sexy single sofa, hit us up at the Magic Tracker Hotline or Amber Neal or the Amber Neal Show on Facebook. And thanks to our sponsors at uh, Meridate for being friends of the show. And we have a new sponsor, Fortune 500 Company, coming on board. We're, we're just literally waiting on the final details so we can announce that too. So we got some great announcements. Y'all always want to stay tuned. They call me the go-to girl for a reason. Y'all stay tuned. We got an announcement tonight. And uh, we will see you guys back tomorrow. Same back time, same back channel. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think um, I'll see y'all tomorrow. I'm like, mm, is it is, is it already the end of the show? Is it, is it the end of the show? Are we done? I don't want to have to say bye to y'all. I love y'all mm, yes. so much. Yes, you have to say bye. Oh, okay, bye. <laughs> okay, guys. We'll see y'all tomorrow for that sexy single self uh, Thirsty Thursdays. Peace out. See ya. Maridate is for committed couples that are either engaged or married and would like to keep the dating in their marriage, fight for the family, and lower the divorce rate one couple at a time. We plan 30 to 50 events a month that include workshops, seminars, webinars, experts, and events all around town. This is for couples that want to develop friendships with other like-minded couples that take their marriage and vows seriously. We will also be offering premarital help so that you will not be a statistic. Would you and your partner like to take international vacations together with other couples and at group rates? When you are home, you will learn your city as you go to each new event. Your membership includes all of our locations. We take the guesswork out of creating, having, and keeping a strong marriage. Contact us today.